All right, today we are going to do a quick stream on this plague, the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus, long boot time and then laggy screen. And I have one here that's in front of me. So this has become a problem for a lot of people, and it seems to be one of the consequences of iOS 11. So phones that are on iOS 11 came down with lots of diseases, and that's pretty typical of any kind of big change to the iOS, like iOS 11 um, compared to earlier versions. Some of that gets tweaked out with updates as the iOS becomes more efficient, but we're still seeing a lot of problems in the iPhone 7 and 7 plus with lag so one thing that we've learned and this is really important for everybody to know you're going to have problems it may not boot at all unless you have your um, front camera assembly so that's your ambient light sensor proximity sensor front camera that little flex has to be plugged in so you no longer can just test a screen out by taking the screen plugging it in seeing if it boots check out your lcd before you install it you have to have the front camera and the home button um, transferred over before the phone will boot normally so this one has a known good front camera assembly installed and it has a home button this is not its native home button this was sent to me board only which give you know it's it's we're gonna have to have whole phone sent for iphone 7 7 plus for these problems but it has it took me i think i i clocked it four minutes for this sucker to boot and let's see if we can wake it up power button is not attached so here it is it's going to look weird with my green screen oh my god i can see, i'm i can see through a phone um and then let's see for touch you can see how we just had a little bit of touch but it's laggy and this screen i know is good this is my test screen so if i hang out long enough i can get some touch going but it's just extremely laggy so touch lag and long boot time that's what we're troubleshooting so the first place that i'm going to look is is there a is it's acting as if i don't have that front camera installed and we've noticed for a while that you can if you put the front camera it's easy to plug it in upside down um, that that you'd get these problems for a while so that's the first place that i'm going to look on this one in fact it's the only place i'm going to look on this one because i need to go pick up sam it's 7 30 and that is coming up so i'm going to go ahead and take this off the battery and i'm going to disconnect the screen and i'm going to disconnect my front camera assembly which i hope is still known good it was known good the last time i used it and get the board out so here's the board so let's look at that connector and see if there's any damage that that we can see so this one, I'm especially drawn to the camera connector because of the note. I love history. I love when the customers give me um, history. So that's the wrong note. <laughs> Where's the note for this one? Um, that, here we go. iPhone 7, car crash, issues with lag. Car crash, not a fan of the car crash part, but um, let's see lags when clicking on apps and rear camera not working all right well if the rear camera is not working then that kind of really uh points to sort of this like kind of top end of the phone is having some kind of problem so let's look at this front camera connector and see if we can troubleshoot there first so let's look i see that somebody's poked around here i poked around here a little bit but i see a big filter that is kind of exposed so somebody kind of has has dug that up but he seems to be still fairly intact maybe it kind of came that way i'm not really sure so we are going to use our new skill that i covered in a recent video of diode mode how to use diode mode to find any fault so what I really want to know is, are all of these many, many lines out of this front camera connector 
which is going to be for a lot of stuff like ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, front camera, power, data, all of that stuff is going to all come through this connector. And I don't really know for sure which one or if there's several of those lines that's really the ones that the phone is wanting to hear back information from the front camera, front camera assembly stuff when it's deciding whether or not to boot. So it sounds like iPhone, iOS 11 and iPhone 7s kind of get a thumbs up around, uh, around the board before they're willing to boot. So these long boot times are probably just missing information where the, the CPU is, is wanting to get it. Oh, come on. You, don't, you can't go there anymore? How about if we move you over? The CPU is wanting to kind of get some, hear something that it's not hearing. And let's see if I can do that. Uh, that's probably, is, that's probably the, the best that we're gonna get today on my uh, my analog multimeter. Maybe I can pull this over, let's see. Let's pull, can we pull over main camera a little bit? There we go. So that you guys can, can see that. All right, fair enough. So, um, so let's go ahead to diode mode and check out if we have any differences between our connector and Let's see, I've got another board here for a different problem that has an image problem, so I don't think it's gonna have any uh, relationship with a front camera assembly problem. So I'm gonna consider that one to be my known good. So let's start comparing. All right, so we're in diode mode, and this is the, this is the connector that I'm gonna consider the good one. And we're just gonna go down the row and see if we can find any differences. Let me. Let me get this uh, popped out here so that I can see um, see some chat. All right. Okay. So here we go. Um, iPhone 7 and up want all that shit connected or it uh, complains like crazy. Yes, exactly. All right. So let's go ahead and go down the row and we'll just do a comparison if we can, which is a little bit tough. but we will persevere all right so let's get our red probe on ground for diode mode measurements and diode mode is going to identify any problem short or open based on differences in these measurements so let's kind of go down the row here so this looks like 0 0.701 ground ground this is our good one 0.662, so let's just try those four over here on the bad one. So here we are at the bad one, and this was 0.701, match, ground, ground, match. All right, let's do the next four. So here's our good one. So we're gonna go to the next set of four here, and we get 0.767, 392, 702, 702. All right, and let's go to the bad one. And we're looking for any kind of mismatch. 758, close enough. Three something, close enough. 702, 724, close enough. And if, they, if we don't find anything and we really think the problem is gonna be here, then we can come back and really scrutinize those values to look for smaller differences. We're looking for big differences like open line or short to ground or something like that. Next set of five is 0.528, 447, 439, and 673. All right, so let's go over here and we're in a third, our third block of four. All right. 0.529, I've really forgotten these. 0 0.440, 442, and whoa, that is definitely different right there. So that's, we did not get a zero, I know that. All right, so let's, let's kind of uh, drill down on that. So this is the, from the, counting up from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven so seven pins from the bottom so let's go ahead and look at those other seven on this side and then we'll focus in on that line 
All right, so on this, on the good one, on the bottom, we have 0 0.674333 that is ground 449 on the bottom and then we're going to match these up on the bottom side close enough close enough exact match close enough all right so then we're going to do this next set of four which is going to include the one that we're interested in so far so on the bad one 0.47 Point seven ground and point four four eight. All right, let's try the good one in that second set of four. Close enough. Close enough. And this one, point six seven four. That's a big mismatch on the on the bad one on the one we're trying to fix we have zero, 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 0001, so that is a huge difference. And then the last one seems to be like a match. Okay, so now we've really found, that was pretty quick. There's, you know, pretty painlessly, we found our way to a pretty serious mismatch. So we have a short to ground on whatever this line is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, short to ground. Let's go look up and figure out what that line is, what does it do, and how could it become short to ground. So let's go on a hunt and see what that line is. So we are going to click off some of our stuff so that we can see ZXW. So we are going to go over to ZXW and see what is that pin? Tell us. All right, so I've already been here before. Um, I haven't gone past here though. One, two, three, this is what made me think this would be a good stream. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, who you is? All right, so it's PP3V0, so it's a power line. Ambient light sensor, Convoy. Do you like that song? Convoy, my sister still does sing that constantly. All right, Convoy connector. Okay, so what do we have over here? We have a cap and then we have this filter and let's see, does it go anywhere else? Probably not on this side of the filter. Oh, yeah, it does. It looks like there's a cap down here. All right, so we have two caps and a filter. Anything else? Let's look. Anything else according to zillion times faster than looking it up on the schematic? And we see just those things. Let's look on the bottom side of the board. Hopefully you guys can see on the bottom side of the board. Um, I don't see any anything in red. All right, so now ZXW doesn't make a distinction between um, between you know a line that's called Jessa line connector, and then there'll be a filter, which is a wire, and then Jessa line not connector. That's really one line. It's just split across the filter, and it gets two different names. ZXW doesn't make a distinction between the fact that the filter is a wire, really it's all one thing, it considers it two different lines when really it's the same. That means that we need to click on that filter so that we can see the rest of the line on the other side of the filter. So let's go back and the filter then is an inline component. So FL2913, if we click on the other side, this is really the, an extension of the same line from our connector through this filter. So where does it go after that? So let's look around and I see nothing over here on the top side of the board. All right, so the other side of the filter goes to, all right, let's see. There is another filter over here on the bottom side of the board, kind of right under that connector. And it goes to, there's a cap and it goes to the, the power management chip, the PMIC. What else? All right, nothing else. Now a filter is a wire. So since this line goes to FL2502, that's really just an extension of our same line. So that means we need to click here and see what's on the other side of that filter. All right, so on this side, it looks like there are, what's this? A cap, 
All right, a cap PP3V0UT, and this is a cap as well. So it goes to these two caps and anywhere else. Let's see, let's look, let's hunt. And we can find all of this on the schematic, which I highly recommend, but just for the sake of getting Sam picked up at 7.30, we're gonna speed up a zillion times and look at ZXW just for some hints. All right, it looks like that uh, that line continues out and it plugs in here to the power button connector. All right, so those guys are all related. And in fact, it would be nice if we, you know, and I think this is really useful when you're kind of um, learning is to make a sketch of that entire line. Really, it's one line that comes from the PMIC, three volt power line, and there's a couple of caps by the PMIC, so you could draw a PMIC coming out, a couple of caps, and then it goes, it kind of splits and it goes to a filter, and then it goes on out to the, I guess that's the power flex, and then it splits and goes through another filter, and then it goes out to this front camera connector, but it's all one tree. And our problem is that somewhere on our tree, we have a short to ground. We've got a hole in the blood vessel and blood's leaking out. So that line is not gonna be able to maintain a voltage if it has a path to ground. So we need to figure out why are you short to ground? Where are you short to ground? Who's making you short to ground? And our only choices are any kind of a cap or a chip because only caps or chips can really become a, a reason why a line overall has somewhere a hole, a path to ground, it's bleeding out to ground. <coughs> All right, so then how are we going to figure out where is the short to ground? What I'd like to know is um, back here at the front camera connector, it could be, if we look at ZXW, let's go back. If we look at ZXW, so let's go back to our front camera connector. Let's see, where's our line? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there it is. So this filter here really separates the connector and this cap from everybody else. So we could say, hey, what happens if I take off this filter? If I take off this filter, then what I'm doing is blowing up a drawbridge and separating line. I'm cutting it in half with scissors so that I have the connector and cap, nothing. And then I've got the rest of the line going back to the PMIC over here. So if I take off that filter, and then I can figure out what side of the filter my short is on. And I can do the same thing for any other filter, resistor, diode, any kind of an inline component. I can use that as kind of a way to sort of uh, narrow down on what is the cause of the short to ground. So let's do that. Let's um, let's try to guess though, where's this gonna be? Let's see, I didn't really research this before, so I didn't think about, hey, um, it, this line apparently also goes to the front camera or the, the power flex. So let's look around here and see, is there a reason, you know, can we like find a, you know, a, a, some kind of a cap or something that we think might be the reason why it's short before we just start kind of randomly uh, tearing up the board. So let's look and let's kind of put our eyes on our possible candidates. So I'm not sure why this uh, water damage sticker is, is red. I don't see any water on the board, so that just might be, you know, alcohol or something from moving around. All right, let's look around some more. All right, it looks to me like there's some tweezer marks here that are not my tweezer marks. So I haven't been here. I see a little bit of kind of flex of um, glass. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. Right here, little, little where am I? Right there, see there's a little fleck of something, a little fleck of something, a little fleck of something. And then I can see right in here that somebody has pushed something in there, a tweezer, a tool, or a fingernail. And then looking really closely at this resistor here, I can, you know, that's that doesn't look native. Some Somebody has pushed there, which is not bad. It doesn't mean anything. It's just an observation. Same thing here. I can see a little bit of just 
a tool, a point has been here. Somebody's stuck something there at some point in time. And then on this cap, I can see a little bit of hairiness. So I kind of feel like there's a chance of some kind of pry damage or tool damage in this area right around here. All right, so let's see if that area maps to any of our potential reasons why we have a short to ground on this line or not. I don't remember, so let's try to look that back up. All right, so let's work quickly and try to get pick Sam up one time. All right, so we're, we're on the prowl. All right, so we gotta try to find this as fast as possible. Okay, so let's see, we have, um, let's go back to here clicking through all right okay this is our area that i was just looking at i think pretty sure all right so there's these three test points yes that's our area three test points and then i've got this cap here c2917 let's look at c2917 on this um on the microscope not schematics no no yes all right, so this guy then, hmm, he looks fine. Does he look fine? Hmm, I don't know if he looks fine. Let's do one of my other favorite tricks. I love close visual exam. You can find so many things. Let's look at it on an angle, and that's why I love my articulating stand that everybody else hates, but I love it because you got to be able to look at him on the side. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that baby on the side. That is not normal. All right, that is not normal at all. All right, so given the fact that I see physical damage, I'm going to give up, I'm gonna skip ahead on my idea of, hey, let's get to the right neighborhood by figuring out, you know, hey, let's pull off filters and kind of narrow down where the source of the short could be. Let's go ahead and say, hey, are you short because of that one ugly looking cap there and look at that you really would have a hard time noticing that just from your straight up you know visual exam like that looking around when you're looking around is that guy gonna jump out at you maybe but on his side definitely will all right let's take that sucker off and see if he is the reason why our pp3v0 ambient light sensor power line is short to ground now i love this case because these kind of cases let's say that we uh, solve this then we've learned something then we then we've learned that maybe the board doesn't care about front camera itself maybe it does but maybe it doesn't what we do know for sure is that if this were to solve that the board's lag and long you know long boot time and then screen lag is going to be because it cares about ambient light sensor ambient light sensor all right so let's let's get him off all right so we'll lay him down over there okay now let's go back and check to see whether or not we still have a short on that line so i will put back up the analog diode mode doohickey with its little see-through button. Isn't that cute for uh, Halloween? All right, so let's test. All right, so we'll go back here and go red probe on ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't you dare go to sleep. Hey, look at that. Is that our right spot? Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 0.673 this was ground now it's 0.673 let's look back and see if that's a match with our good board before this multimeter falls asleep which i hate that feature of fluke like dude if you if you feel me using your voltage to do measurements then how about this don't go to sleep right now 0.675 so now we're back to a match with our known good excellent we have put out a fire and so maybe that's all there is to it. I'm not really sure, but that's definitely going to be a good little conclusion for our video. We found something. Let's find out, though. Let's do a test and see. Yes, please do go to sleep. Thank you. I'm done.
Um, let's see whether or not that makes a difference for our screen lag and boot time. Now, I'd like to kind of proof these parts right now because I've been using them all day long on a whole bunch of different iPhone 7s, so I'm no longer, I, you know, kind of before making a conclusion from this test, I'd like to get out a working board and kind of proof that, the, that this front camera still is in good enough shape, that its flex is in good enough shape, that despite all the many connect disconnects as I've been troubleshooting all day, um, that that isn't going to be a problem. Now I'll still have a bit of a long boot time because this board, this was sent board only. I don't have the native home button, which means we're gonna have to wait for the board to, to say, home button, are you there? Hello? 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 Bueller? Bueller? Bueller, it's gonna have to do that until it's like, fuck it, that's not the same home button, but it's got a home button, won't work, but it will still allow it to boot. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. So we will have a, a longer boot time, but what I wanna know is whether or not we, if it uh, is still four minutes, and I want to know whether or not we still have a screen leg. So let's let that sit there and boot. I will uh, see what you guys are talking about over here in chat. Um, now, the other thing with iPhone 7 is audio IC, the new touch disease, audio IC problems, which I thought were going to be solved. In fact, I kind of regretted buying all these audio ICs uh, in anticipation of all the audio IC problems in iPhone 7 causing all sorts of uh, uh, mayhem and then iOS 11.0.3 came out with a nice little note that says hey by the way we fixed all that audio IC fuckery ha ha god damn it I just ordered all these audio ICs uh, but what we're seeing kind of lately is that not all audio IC I, iPhone 7 lags and boots loops and all of this kind of same kind of problems are solved by that so let's Let's see what you guys are chatting about while we are waiting for this to, to boot up. Insect screens, what? Screws and drill. What happened to the iPad Air with no touch? Uh, I didn't work at all over the weekend, so it's still sitting right here. Actually on Friday, I didn't work on Friday at all. Uh, we did the Maker Fair, super fun, the Maker Fair at the elementary school. I was blown away, if you give kids if you just ask them questions and you know same same kind of thing um where the same thing i do in the course a whole lot of you tell me you know where where you know hey you give them an idea we had all these snap circuit kits and they're fun they can do the little project but then you could say like hey what do you think happens if you hook up like all six of these batteries to that one motor you know they don't i don't know what's going to happen so then they can they can have fun. You can make it super fun. We, I made them dump out these like totes and put them on their head for hard hats and hold up these fake safety glasses. Then we had we teamed up with these guys downstairs that had just brought a bunch of stuff to take apart: old vacuum cleaners and CD players and printers and Easy Bake ovens. So these kids were just hammering and tearing all that up. And then uh, I went down there and I would say, you know, speakers and motors and things they were harvesting. Bring them up and we will see what happens if we can put them on the DC power supply and try to identify what these things do. So they got to see a speaker and it was a great day. So uh, I did not work on my iPad Air. Uh, instead, I spent time at the Maker Fair with, with the elementary school. Let's see. What happens after fall the iPhone? Well, this one got run over by a car. But I, I, you know, the, the cap that we just took off is not run over by a car damage. That's tool damage from somebody getting in there and, and taking off connectors with some kind of a tool. All right, well, it was three degrees Celsius here. This, it was five degrees Celsius here this morning. I remember clicking over to Celsius. All right, ZXW. Kick any caps off that are on the PP3V0 line. All right. I use an air hammer to nudge caps from boards. 
All right. Check the video. Yeah, if, you're, if you want to use ZXW, go to iPadRehab.com. Click iPad Rehab Supply, and you can buy a ZXW tool, and your life will be a zillion times faster. It's no substitute for the schematics. It's just a um, speed up kind of thing. All right. Jess, I haven't watched your stream in a while. What is this background now? Oh, let's do a fun background for for Larry. Let's see, Larry, do you, do you want to go to an old saloon? Let's promote that. Let's go to an old saloon. I think Larry would like to go to an old saloon with me. There we go. Now let's take off. Uh, let's take off the microscope view, but I lost it. There we go. Look, we're at an old saloon. Yay! Let's pour a drink while we wait for this thing to boot up. Okay, so it booted up. Here it is. And let's see. All right, still has laggy touch. So not a super satisfying stream. Um, but my guess is that this has now become a parts problem because I kind of questioned this on the last phone that I did, but I did want to throw up this stream before having to get Sam. So I got to pick up Sam at 725. And I think this one is just kind of a, uh, just informative that you'd be surprised at how, at, at the iPhone 7 kind of globally has to work. There's a lot of things that we used to think in the iPhone 6 and 6S were, uh, well, definitely in the 6, that pretty much anything that wasn't kind of part of the whole spinal cord, you could kick off and the phone didn't care. You could take off uh, you know, audio IC and you could take off Chestnut and Stockholm and anybody and touch ICs, phone's still going to boot. And then it, there's not a lot required for it to boot in the seven, especially with iOS 11 and the seven plus, that's not true anymore. It needs to get thumbs up kind of all the way around. And on, on this one, you know, a short to ground on the ambient light sensor line, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's like seems to be i'm gonna i'm going to guess that that is why this phone is is uh really laggy because it's can't you know detect the ambient light sensor there's no power to the ambient light sensor so things like that just hey i you know like think about how easy it would be to crush the little ambient light sensor or to have it you know damaged on the as you transfer those flexes so having known good you know trusted ones that you don't fuck up constantly like this one uh parts is going to be really important in fact it's almost worth it i i i think i it's 726 let me see what happens if i swap this screen really quickly with this other one here that is probably less janky i'm going to leave the home button i do kind of want to know all right i'm going to use this other one I really, I had a native OEM one that I took off of my iPhone 7, but I think I left it at home, which sucks. It's my one, it's my, <laughs> I have like, I have like pretty good screens, probably good screens, and then definitely good, like known good screens. That's the one I'd, I'd like to use right here. Okay. I'd also like to use a known good battery, but I do, definitely don't have that. All right, so we are going to leave the home button attached of the questionable screen, and we are going to attach a less questionable screen. All right, just because I'd like to, if there's, if we can get a quick answer, I'd like to know it. All right. Where do you want to go, Larry? Do you want to go to the beach? We can go to the beach. We can go in front of the Apple store. Okay, so now I'm booting again with this crazy nonsense. So I've got the home button. Ah! The home button still attached from my um, previously known good screen. And now I'm attaching, it really is just a customer screen, so I don't know if it's good or not. It looks good, seems okay. So we'll see if that makes any change or not. It's still not really my OEM known good screen that I'd like to be using here, but 
I'm in a hurry and thought that you guys, I thought this would be a cool um, little <coughs> example of uh, finding a, a quick problem using diode mode. All right, let's go, let's go to the beach. All right, let's see. <laughs> this guy is a hoot. Hey, Jessa, I wanted to come to your course, but they said there's no space. I can't wait. I need to be there. Help me, please. This guy called up Sunday today and says, I know that the that practical board repair school is, is filled, but I want to come anyway. Well, too bad, you know, like, so what do you want me to do? To call up one of these guys and tell them, I'm sorry, there's a guy that really wants to come, so you can't come. No, you know, you, it's first come, first serve, bro, and you're welcome to come in December. It's not, it's like a couple weeks later. There's spots still available in December, spots still available in January. I mean, there used to be like a four-month wait to, to come to the course. Then we started doing a few more, and now it's back to a manageable, you know, couple of weeks. It's not that big of a deal. You want to come to the course? Sign up, just like everybody else. All right. He's a friggin' wire. I knew it. All right, um, Jessa is capicidal. Kill it with tweezers. Interrogate him. I'd like to interrogate him. All right, so there we go. Um, slow upload speed. Oh, I know. Larry wants to do some videos, uh, recording videos. I've I've thought about it like this. You know, like it would. This could be a great video. You know, eventually this will work. It's either hey, it's solved, or it is hey, this was a cool idea, but then there's something else, and then kind of string it together into one cohesive video. But the it's it's not just the video editing; it's the upload. I still have my iPad Air that I that caught on fire and I drilled a hole in the board. That's like hours of video. I edited it down to something like an hour and forty five minutes of of edited, interesting, catch it on fire, drill it out, put it back together. Uh, and it, it, I've tried uploading it a few times and it, it, can't, it can't get the whole upload. All right, this is still taking a long time to boot and it's unclear whether that's gonna be because it's not the native home button or what. Okay, you're at the salon. All right. What tweezers do you use? Your link says not available. We're going to be listing tweezers on iPad Rehab Supply. So um, we have a bunch of different tweezers that I want to kind of do a tweezer video on. And there's different tweezers that I use for different jobs. So we're going to be listing, I think we did list the cheap tweezers um, uh, recently. So those are listed on iPad Rehab Supply. Go to iPadRehab.com and look around and see what's in the supply store. All kinds of new stuff is coming up. Our fun t-shirts. You can, you too can order a, uh, a um, do you even solder, bro? Or I void warranties uh, t-shirt. All right, I really have to go get Sam now because I'm gonna be super late. And this phone is taking way too long to boot. All right, but I just wanna see if the screen lag is gone or not. All right, so I just replaced an audio I see. I didn't know iOS 11 fixed this problem. Well, it doesn't fix all of them apparently, but yes, iOS 11, okay, it booted. Let's see. Oh man, this is janky. All right, so we still have work to do on this one because it still has um, laggy touch on a second screen. So now we know for sure that um, it has some touch, um, but now we know for sure that that short to ground on our uh, ambient light sensor line was a problem and we solved the problem, but that's not the only reason why this phone is having serious lag. So what would we do next? Well, now that we know that we've kind of cleared the front camera connector, that was idea number one. Front camera connector, do you detect it? You know, is it plugged in? That seems to be okay. Then what would we look for next? And it would point to signature problems. So this phone's next thing up for it would be to get a new audio IC. So we're gonna see whether or not audio IC solves the lag on this phone. And I'll probably, I'm not gonna do it tomorrow cause it's, uh, cause it's Halloween. Um, but I will, uh, I, will, I will definitely do an audio 
I see for iPhone 7 on stream. I think I've got a couple out here that might need that. All right, so there you go. And I am gonna go pick up Sam. So hopefully you guys uh, will stop back in when we get to that audio I see, and hopefully that will get this one fixed. <laughs>